Hello guys, I'm Alan from Technology Moments and welcome once again to our videos. This time, after hearing many of you who had frequently asked about HPE or Hewlett Packard Enterprise products and their instant on product line, well, here we are today bringing you our experience with this extraordinary Wi-Fi 6 access point, the AP21, which we put to the test and we were truly amazed by. Not only because of how easy its initial configuration is, but also despite being 100% cloud-based, allows us to quickly control the equipment, whether in small deployments or in environments with a few dozen clients or even more robust solutions involving thousands of concurrent devices. To understand the scope of this video, we will quickly analyze key concepts and preparations for instant on devices like this one. Initial equipment setup or configuration, testing this AP21 equipment and advantages of instant on. And finally, we will conclude what we found out. If you already know how this instant on product line works, you can skip directly to point two or three. However, for those new to this HPE product line, the management concept is 100% cloud-based, and that means that we must connect the device to a port on our network, which can guarantee internet access. This allows us to manage and add new devices to our infrastructure surprisingly quickly, either from the app or by accessing the platform through any internet browser. Even better, it's a very user-friendly interface, whichever one we decide to use. Our preference, of course, is the web interface accessed from any desktop computer, which will let you have access to more information in any given screen. We'll see more of that in a moment. If we didn't have any instant on account created, it'll take a matter of seconds to create it. We validate our email and we'll be on our main page in a matter of seconds. Ideally, we should have a secondary device to manage our network. So it is a good idea to install the mobile app and log in from that one. While many statistics will need to be included, it can still provide very useful control over our network. Okay, so basically what we receive in the box is the access point itself. At a first glance, it seems very small, but as we said at the beginning of this video, it turns out to be a small but very powerful device. The clip for mounting on a ceiling, wall, or rail, and a 3-foot Ethernet cable. Okay, so this is a device that can be powered either with a 12 volt uh, power adapter or you can power it through a power over ethernet switch. The power adapter is not included. Uh, that is very common in this type of products, which is geared toward businesses, mainly because deployments in these environments are done through switches like this one or like this one for larger deployments. However, we will also have the option of using an adapter for smaller deployments. It's a really compact device compared to similar Wi-Fi 6 alternatives, and its power consumption is around 5 watts, making it very efficient. We connect our access point, ensuring it has uh, internet access, very important, and then go to the Instant On app or website. We then need to create a site, if we haven't already. This is where the particular device is going to be installed, and it's going to be physically connected. We double check the location, remember that as we've seen, this will be very important for devices that transmit on the 6 GHz frequency as they can be geo-restricted for that band depending on the country. We add the device at this point by entering the serial number of the access point that is already connected, turned on, and in configuration mode. This is checked by its indicators blinking in alternate colors. In a few seconds, it will find the access point and proceed to add it to your site. On the right, it shows us the details in case that you're not sure. Then we have to choose whether it acts as an access point for an existing network or if it will also route to another network or directly to the internet. The access point will be provisioned and we can then begin our customization, such as naming it, the location of the devices and many more. We then proceed to create our network or networks as in our case, uh, these will be the Wi-Fi SSIDs. In step three, if we already have a router, we allow it to continue managing our network in terms of IP addresses and virtual networks. Uh, we save our configurations and we'll be absolutely done. We will have our access point ready for it to accept concurrent connections. Uh, you can create any additional networks if necessary at this point. If we want, we can then configure parameters such as the bands to use, their security, and change the password. We can use this option if we have remote clients using, for example, the 2.4 GHz network, such as IP cameras and smart devices. In short, we'll have plenty of control, most importantly, very easily. So uh, at this point, we decided to test the equipment as far as we could go. 
So what better way to do this than to migrate our main network, which I rely on two access points, and move all my traffic to this new one. Therefore, the main network we just created has the same parameters as my main network. We disconnected our access points and all the clients began connecting or migrating to this new access point. This started to generate the first statistics. And by the way, such migration was very fast. We managed to test it for more than 10 days, pushing it to the limit, and we were honestly surprised by its performance, especially considering that this access point is the little brother of the family. For example, it doesn't include the Wi-Fi 6E, 6 GHz band, and that's why its network interface is simply Gigabit Ethernet. Again, more than enough for the vast majority. To give you an idea, we tested it with several HD streaming devices uh, concurrently while transferring medium-sized files between wired and wireless computers. Very good performance, no issues at all. Close to the access point, this will be the expected connection speed in real life. We had a couple Wi-Fi 7 client devices that didn't perform as well, but we'll be talking about that in future videos. We didn't experience any system freeze nor needed to reset the unit, even during our demanding tests. We only noticed a few small alerts, which have always been there, by the way, especially for those small smart devices that struggle to connect to the network when they are hidden and far away. Our speed tests allowed us to see how far we could go. For example, if we have an internet provider with speeds over 1 gigabit per second and we want to transfer that speed to our clients, the idea would be to opt for one of those devices featuring Wi-Fi 6E and at least a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connection upstream. This, as we have also shared in other videos. I think I'll end up leaving one of these permanently in my office uh, because of its range being better than the one that I currently have in use. For example, in these two remote locations, the signal used to be very weak and even within the theoretical limits of the small access point in terms of clients and traffic. It showed us that it's really well sized. Among the advantages, we couldn't miss, of course, to point to instant on. Uh, of course, the most important is its availability and access for being cloud-based. It's very easy to learn, which makes advanced configurations accessible to less experienced users without sacrificing security or performance. Very important. From the instant on interface, we'll have access to many features, create guest networks, uh, see which client consumes the most, and block any clients that we want. It's important to note here that these are blocked for each network independently, so you might want to block such client in all the networks. Managing our networks from the mobile app is great. Access is fast and overall, we'll have access to basically all the same things that we have from the web access, only that it is done from a smaller screen. Unfortunately, and this might be the only disadvantage that we noticed, uh, is that we can only view traffic and statistics for the last 24 hours, which may be very important for many if you want, for example, to isolate time and cost of a power or ISP failure. Uh, our conclusions are that we found this unit to be very solid in terms of hardware, with surprising performance even when being the simplest on its group, as we just said. And overall, we noticed above average performance. We also noticed the surprising ease of implementation and initial configuration, allowing you to get a lot of information of your network. As we said, the only disadvantage we noticed weren't at the hardware level, but rather in the control that we can have over it from the Instant On page. Ironically, Instant On is its greatest advantage and strength, allowing for such simplified management and being accessible for all users from anywhere around the world. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, but above all, that it was very useful and provided you with all the information that you're looking for, particularly if you're making the decision to migrate to devices from the HP Instant On product line. As always, your huge support to our channel and our efforts to bring to you all this content is to simply subscribe to our channel and like this video. See you next time.